The House will come to order. <laughs> Prayer by the Chaplain. Please join me as you so see fit. Let us pray. O oh, most wonderful, loving, and grounding presence of the universe, who is called by many names and is the one that brings us to a sense of hope, meaning, and purpose, I present to you a gathering of people who come before you today in gratitude for the privilege of attending to the well-being of all who live in this state. They come with thanks today for this beautiful landscape and chilly place we call home, and they ask for deep and focused guidance as they seek to serve these citizens of Minnesota. Indeed, they also thank you for this day, a new day to make a difference in the lives of those citizens who need and depend upon them, asking for the boldness to be leaders of action and heart as they make difficult decisions for the benefit of all the varied populations of this vast community from the farmlands to the cities and all the places in between. This is not a task that is always easy and yes, is sometimes painful. So in that vein, grant them a spirit of compassion and cooperation through the following ways of being. Wisdom to govern amid the conflicting interests and issues of our times. A sense of welfare and true needs for all of the people a keen thirst for justice and fairness, the confidence in what is good and fitting in the process, the ability to work together in harmony even when there is honest disagreement, the willingness to listen to and hear all voices on all sides, even if occasionally it is not what they wish to hear. And most of all, grant them personal peace in their own lives and joy in their tasks. Finally, while I ask the blessings on those who choose to take up the difficult task of governing, it is not only those who are elected, but also those who serve as staffers, interns, and volunteers whose daily support makes carrying out these tasks possible. This prayer is indeed prayed from the deepest part of the hearts of each one in this gathering. So shall it be. Amen. Amen. The chaplain for today is Reverend Denise Dunbar Perkins, retired minister, Presbytery of the Twin Cities area. Pledge of Allegiance. Please remain standing and recite the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The clerk will take the roll. You're welcome. The clerk will close the roll.
A quorum is present. Members, please take your conversations off of the House floor into the alcoves or the retiring room. The clerk will read the journal of the preceding day. Journal of the House, 91st session, 2019, 11th day, St. Paul, Minnesota, Monday, February 11th, 2019. If there is no objection, further reading of the journal will be dispensed with and the journal will stand as corrected by the chief clerk. Hearing no objection, the journal is approved as corrected by the chief clerk. Reports of standing committees and divisions. A copy of this order of business has been placed on each member's desk. If there is no objection, the reports will be adopted. The member from Sherburn, Representative Zerwas. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I would rest, request a roll call on the committee report for House File 168. 168. Are there 15 hands? Seeing 15 hands, there will be a roll call. A copy of this order of business has been placed on each member's desk. A roll call has been requested on House File 168. We will act on all other committee reports first and then act on House File 168. If there is no objection to the reports, Thanks. with the ex exception of House File 168, will be adopted. Hearing no objection, the reports are adopted. We will now act on House File 168. Representative Zerwas. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. House File 168 was heard in Health and Human Service Policy and referred uh, to the Ways and Means Committee. Uh, Madam Speaker, during that committee hearing, a DE1 Delete Everything Amendment was added that would codify in law a 7% cut to home and community-based services uh, deeply, deeply and grievously wounding our uh, workers that are taking care of the most vulnerable Minnesotans. Members, I would ask that we send this bill back to committee for further discussion about the appropriate way to move forward. To be really clear, members, as this DE was offered in committee, it would be the first time. It would be engrossed here on the House floor a green vote is not only a vote to advance the bill members, but to vote in favor of the DE1 amendment that cuts rates for critical services of Minnesotans with developmental, uh, developmental brain injuries and those who need community-based services. A red vote on this motion, members, a red vote undoes this disastrous amendment and will allow the experts on the committee and experts impacted by this amendment to testify in committee, uh, to re-examine the bill and come up with a better solution. Members, with a billion and a half dollar surplus, certainly one month into session, you don't need to vote to cut home and community-based community services by 7%. Thank you, members. Please, please vote red. The member from St. Louis, Representative Schultz. Thank you, Madam Chair. So the amendment um, actually improves wages for the direct support professionals that work in home and community-based services. This is a very complicated issue, the disability waiver rate system, and it's something that we need to address given what happened in the federal government. And the federal government stating that we could not implement um, a, a increase um, the way that was uh, proposed in legislation. So members, the amendment actually goes to increase the wages of direct support professionals. And it needs to be discussed in HHS finance where hopefully it's headed so we can talk about a new reimbursement rate methodology so increases in reimbursement rates to our providers go directly to the wages of the workers. That has not been happening in the past under current legislation. Discussion. The member from Sherburne, Representative Zerwas. Well, Madam Speaker, um, 
Representative Schultz stated that uh, in committee as well, except that in 2014, when this uh, body moved forward with the 5% rate increase, of course, 80% of those wages, uh, of that rate increase, was encumbered to wages. In fact, you can find that in Chapter 312, Article 27, Section 75, Subsection G. So yes, rate increases are uh, encumbered to wages. It was encumbered to wages at 80%. So was the bill uh, that did the 7%. It was encumbered to wages at 80%. Members, experts that work in this field testified to that in committee. It tried to correct Representative Schultz on that misstatement of fact in committee. Members, this needs to be sent back to committee. Trust me on this one. Members, one month into session, over a billion dollar surplus. You do not, to our freshman member friends, you do not want your first vote of consequence regarding health and human services to be a 7% cut to those taking care of the most vulnerable Minnesotans. The member from Olmsted, Representative Liebling. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I just wanted to clarify for members what you'll be voting on here. So if you vote with Representative Zerwas, if you vote no, you will be voting well, me, a, actually, Madam Speaker, maybe I could ask, and as a point of parliamentary inquiry, if you could just clarify the meaning of a yes and no vote, and then I would make my statement. I just want to be accurate. A green vote would be a vote to adopt the committee report on House File 168 and move it along the road. A red vote is not to adopt the committee report on House File 168. Representative Liebling. Thank you, Madam Speaker. So. If you vote red on this, members, you are voting against requiring that the, that the money that we allocate goes to the workers. That is what the amendment does. Now, Representative Schultz said in committee that this does need work. It is not a perfect bill yet. And what is happening today is that it is being moved to Ways and means from there, we expect that it will go to the committee that I chair, the HHS Finance Division, where it will receive further work. So for Representative Zerwas to say send it back to committee, it is going to the committee that it needs to be in to do the work that needs to be done. But I just want you to be really clear. This is um, if rep a vote with Representative Zerwas is a vote against dedicating money to go to workers. So you can feel very confident voting green here to advance the bill to the next committee. This is the process we have. We do our work in committees. And for Representative Zerwas to bring this up on the House floor and try to confuse everybody and talk about this extremely complicated bill just is not a, is a disservice to all of us here and to the public. This is committee work. It needs to be done in committee. So I would ask you to vote green with Representative Schultz to advance the bill. The member from Isanti, Representative Doubt. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and, and thank you, Representative Liebling. Um, I think what Representative Zerwas is trying to do is to send this back to the committee. Uh, that's exactly what his motion does. Uh, he's trying to send this back to the committee where this amendment was added uh, so that this can be fixed. Um, and I'll remind members, this is important. I know some of you are new here this year, quite a few. And I want to, this is the first time you're taking a vote like this, so I want to be very clear about what you're doing. And you can find the answer to this in your Mason's manual. Looks like that. If you'd like to borrow mine and look it up, I'll borrow it to you. I can even talk for a while so you have time to read it. But section 670, paragraph 2 states that when the report of a committee is agreed to, the recommendation of the committee becomes the action of the House. So the, the amendment that was adopted in committee codifies the 7% cut, and when you vote to adopt this committee report here, you are literally voting to cut by 7% the wages of these hardworking folks and codify that in law. 
That is what you are doing, and believe me, I'm certain constituents in your districts will likely hear about it at some point in the future. Um, so please be very careful about what you're doing. If there is any confusion, the best thing to do is to vote with Representative Zerwas, who, by the way, is trying to save you from yourselves right now. Thank you, Representative Zerwas. Vote with him, and the bill goes back to committee where we can have a more thorough conversation about what the amendment does and whether we want it to cut 7% or not. Then it can come back here, and then it can move along its way. But today, if you vote to adopt this committee report, you are voting to codify this in law, and you are voting to support that. That literally is what you are voting to do. So be very careful about which button you press, because it is important. And I'm only standing up because I know there's a lot of new members, and you may not be sure about what you're voting on here. This isn't just, we're moving a bill along to the next committee. You literally are voting to a, on this content. This is the action of the motion that's in front of the body right now. So if you want this, if you have any confusion and you want this bill to be worked on, you'd best vote with Zerwas. He's trying to save you from yourselves. If you don't vote with him and this moves along, you literally are voting for a 7% cut for these workers. So I hope you listen to him. He's trying to help you. Discussion. The member from St. Louis, Representative Schultz. Thank you, Madam Chair. So that's exactly what we're trying to do is help workers. There is a huge shortage of direct support professionals in this area, and it's very complicated work. That's why it needs to go to HHS Finance because it's a reimbursement rate methodology. That's exactly the committee that needs to go to so we can do the work that has to happen on this bill in a smaller committee and not on the House floor. I don't think most people on the House floor know what the disability weight waiver rate system even is and all the complicated language that goes into setting that rate methodology. So what the bill will do is increase the wages directly to direct support professionals, those working in home and community-based services. That's what they're asking for, to see higher wages so they can address the shortage that they're seeing in this area. The second thing is that we don't really have a billion dollar surplus. We have a much smaller surplus when we account for inflation. So there is less money and the last set of revenue that came in was much lower than the, project, the projections by $267 million. So we have to make sure that any additional spending is getting to the wages of the workers to address the shortage. I encourage vote. I encourage uh, members to vote green, vote yes, to send it to the HHS Finance Committee where it belongs. The member from Blue Earth, Representative Considine. Why, thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, Speaker Doubt, I'm sorry, uh, but you are absolutely incorrect. In HHS Finance last year, Kevin Goodenow, the advocate for these people, was asked point blank, is this 7% for the workers? And he said, no, it is not. Um, and that was the big problem with this. Of course, you guys could have funded it anyways, but you didn't. Um, if you are concerned about the workers, I have a bill right now that I am sitting at my desk that puts all these people into a single job classification and says the starting wage is $14 an hour, a whopping 29000 a year, which is embarrassing enough as it is, but um, right now in greater Minnesota, it is $11 an hour. But again, you can check HH Finance. Representative Dean was the chair. He was asked point blank, and it does not go to the workers. Thank you. Discussion. The member from Dakota, Representative Garofalo. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker and members. And you know, members, we do not have enough bipartisanship on this floor, so I want to rise today and say that I completely disagree with the Minority Leader, Representative Doubt. Uh, if you are a majority party member and you're from the suburbs, 
and you're from in your first term here, you should not listen to Representative Doubt. You should vote with Representative Schultz, and you should vote with the majority of your leadership on your side of the aisle. Any further discussion? Seeing none, the clerk will take the roll. The clerk will close the roll. There being 71 ayes and 53 nays, the motion prevails. The report is adopted. Second reading of House Files. <clears throat> Second reading of House File number 58. Second reading, House File number 267. Second reading. Second reading, House File number 270. Second reading. Second reading, House File number 281. Second reading. Second reading, House File number 476. Second reading. Second reading, House File number 570. Second reading. And Second reading, House File number 745. Second reading. Introduction and first reading of House Files. Following House Files been offered for introduction today, the Chief Clerk will report the House Files and give them their first reading. Introduction of first reading of House Files 1065 through 1267. First reading, House Files 1065 through 1267. Report from the Committee on Rules and Legislative Administration. Winkler from the Committee on Rules and Legislative Administration pursuant to rules 1.21 and 3.33, designates the following bills to be placed on the calendar for the day for Thursday, February 14th, 2019, and establishes a pre filing requirement for amendments offered to the following bills, House File number 211 and 462. The first bill on the calendar for the day is House File 211. The clerk will report the bill. House file number 211, number one on the calendar for the day, an act relating to transportation. There are no amendments at the desk. The clerk will give the bill its third reading. Third reading, House file number 211. Third reading. Members, please take your conversations off of the House floor into the alcoves or the retiring room. I call on the author of the bill, the member from St. Louis, Representative Schultz, to explain the bill. Thank you, Madam Chair. House File 211 adds physical therapists to the list of practitioners that are able to sign a form to allow people with a disability to get a disability parking permit. So I encourage members to support it. It's a good bill. It has bipartisan support. It just got moved to the floor of the Senate today. I want to thank Representative Keel for working on this last session and all the other co-authors. I also want to thank Kathleen Picard and the physical therapists in my district and um, throughout Minnesota to advocate for this bill. It will likely um, reduce costs because it eliminates unnecessary visits to the other practitioners to get this um, disability permit. And physical therapists are in a very unique position because they get training on mobility and it would be very good at judging whether or not a person would need this type of permit. So members, I encourage you to vote for the bill. And thank you. Discussion. Discussion to the bill. Seeing no discussion, the clerk will take the roll.
Members, please vote. The clerk will close the roll. There being 122 ayes and zero nays, the bill is passed and its title agreed to. Second bill on the calendar for the day is House File 462. The clerk will report the bill. <coughs> House File number 462, number two on the calendar for the day, an act relating to transportation, the first engrossment. I call on the member from Anoka, Representative Bernardi, who will explain the bill. Hello, thank you, Madam Speaker and members. House File 462 is a bill related to bicycle traffic regulations. It brings bicycle traffic um, in alignment with our vehicle traffic language, which was recommended by our <coughs> House staff to do that. It clarifies certain provisions, and it also has modifying current some practices. And the most important part, it strengthens safety for people who bike across our state. I encourage a yes vote. Thank you. Discussion. The member from Wasika, Representative Petersburg. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. I also would urge a, a green vote. This in, bill indeed does provide for safety of riders and clarify some of the rules that we've had. And it was in a bill last year that, that we all approved, so I, I would suggest a, a green vote. Thank you. There are no amendments at the desk. The clerk will give the bill its third reading. Third reading, House File Number 462. Third reading. Any further discussion? Seeing none, the, oh, the member from Wabasha, Representative Drizkowski. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Would the author yield? She will yield, Representative Drizkowski. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, Representative Bernardi, I, I have the bill on my phone in front of me. I don't have the uh, numbered version in print here, so I don't have the line number. Uh, but the bill strikes out a section uh, that says that, um, oh, I'm going to read the current language to the body. It says, persons riding bicycles upon a roadway or shoulder shall not ride more than two abreast and shall not impede the normal and reasonable movement of traffic on a, la on a lane roadway uh, shall ride with a, within a single lane. So, Representative Bernardi, your bill strikes the part that says, shall not impede the normal and reasonable movement of traffic. So, will this then allow bicycles, as they are operating on our roadways, to impede the reasonable movement of traffic? Representative Bernardi. Thank you, Representative Draskowski, for that question. In our language in the bills relating to other forms of vehicles that use our roadways that may drive slower than the actual speed limit, like tractors, buggies. There's no language that's put in there that they about impeding um, traffic. So this is language getting it in the same context of how we treat other people driving on our roadways that don't drive the actual speed limit. Representative Driskowski. Well, thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Representative Bernardi. Um, that's, uh, I mean, the congruity is good, but are we encouraging people then or giving them uh, the free limit to uh, impede traffic? And that's my question. And maybe, maybe it's not a problem, it hasn't been a problem. Well, maybe it has been a problem with buggies and tractors and other things in certain cases. Uh, they, of course, have slow-moving vehicle signs on the back of them. So I, I would assume and hope you talked about this in committee. Uh, but I'm hopeful that the bill, and I think I'm going to vote for the bill, but I'm hopeful that the bill isn't encouraging bicyclists to impede the traffic movement on our roadways. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The member from Roseau, Representative Fabian. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Well, I'm excited about this bill because I think that talking about bicycles at this point in the session is a sure sign that spring is just around the corner. The member from Olmsted, Representative Quam. Thank you, Madam uh, Speaker. Would the author of the bill yield for a question? She will, Representative Quam. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, all the other examples were brought up, tractors, and etc. have to have a slow-moving vehicle sign prominent, um, and they've got the, the exemption from that. So 
Would bicyclists have to conform to the same standard? Representative Bernardi. Uh, thank you, Ms. Speak, uh, Madam Speaker. Uh, Representative Quam, there's not language in there regarding that. Representative Quam. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, you know, frankly, the general idea of this bill is fine, but I think we need to look at some of the conformity and make sure that we don't uh, cause problems because in a lot of the rural areas when they do have bike clubs and that, et cetera, um, I think we have to be conscious of you know, the obstruction and the hazard that might be caused. So I'm going to vote for this and hope that further deliberations produce a better bill. Any further discussion? Seeing none, the clerk will take the roll on the bill. Members, please vote. The clerk will close the roll. There being 122 ayes and zero nays, the bill is passed as amended and its title agreed to. Motions and resolutions. There are copies of the non-controversial motions at the House desk and online. If there is no objection, we will take action on these motions first. Hearing no objection, the motions prevail. Announcements. The member from Scott, right behind Representative Nash, the member from Scott, Representative Albright. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, members, uh, I am very happy to welcome folks from the Minnesota Independent, Independence College and community that are here with us today. Uh, if they could stand so that they could be recognized. The MICC is a college located in Richfield. Uh, Representative Howard is a, a co-author, or chief author of a bill that's uh, appropriating money for the continuation of this very good program. I'd also like to recognize uh, one of my BFFs, uh, Michael Fuel who is a recent graduate of the uh, college and uh, has uh, a great story to tell. I invite all of you to come down afterwards, shake this gentleman's hand, hear his story, and find out a little more about how important this program is. So thank you. Further announcements? The member from Kuchiching, Representative Eklund. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, members, this past weekend my district and the people of Grand Portage Band suffered a great and unexpected loss. Norman Deschamps, the chairman of the board, passed away. Norman has, Norman has served as chairman of the Grand Portage Band for 27 years and also served as president of the Minnesota Chippewa Tribe for a good deal of that time. He dedicated his life to his family, to his people, and his community. He was a quint quintessential gentleman and leader, from bringing a boys and girls club to the reservation to entering into an agreement with the state to create Grand Portage State Park. His many works in office stand as an ongoing testament to his leadership. Norman is survived by his wife, Debbie, and four daughters. Madam Speaker, I ask that the House join me in sending our deepest condolences to Norman's family and the people of Grand Portage. We all share this great loss together. Although he may have passed from our sight, his many deeds 
and his memory will be an enduring blessing for, to us all. And I ask for a moment of silence. Members, please stand for a moment of silence for the passing of the chairman. Announcements. The member from St. Louis, Representative Sandsteed. Thank you, Madam Chair. Members, just a reminder, next Wednesday, uh, February 20th, Duluth and St. Louis County Days are going to be held um, at the Intercontinental. There is free shuttle service. Uh, pick up in front of the state office building and the state capitol to the uh, Intercontinental. It's a great opportunity to learn about the multitude of great things going on up in the area, and we'd love to see you there. Announcements. Representative Winkler. Madam Speaker, I move that when the House adjourns today, it adjourns until 9 a.m. Monday, February 18th, 2019. Representative Winkler moves that when the House adjourns today, it adjourns until 9 a.m. Monday, February 18th, 2019. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Those opposed, please say no. The motion prevails. Representative Winkler. Madam Speaker, I move that the House do now adjourn. Representative Winkler moves that the House do now adjourn. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Those opposed, please say no. The motion prevails and the House stands adjourned until 9 a.m. Monday, February 18th. <laughs>